might have started out a little on the low side, but thank God for bringing us to the place where we are this moment, that we can give Him glory and give Him praise. You've got to understand, my brothers and sisters, the enemy will fight us all the way, but we've got to fight back. We have to fight back. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord for his faithfulness. We thank God for Brother Keith who went on to Jamaica for the home going of his grandmother who outlived his dad. He went down and we thank God for the way God worked. And we also thank God for his grace, traveling mercies and all of that, and that he's back. Uh, we thank God for Brian who is missing the drums today. He's in New York with his godparents and friends and he's watching the service and telling us about light and this and that and all kinds of stuff. Uh, make sure you enjoy the, the worship where you are. Amen. And we thank God for Pastor Claxton who is with us. He'll be with us for a little while. He'll be sharing with us. And we bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Thank God for our son who was here last Wednesday night. Those of you who keep missing Wednesday night, we shut the stream down so some of you didn't get no stream. And so that you'll be in the house of the Lord. Amen. He was here, Pastor Lexi Singh, and he ministered in a powerful way last Wednesday night. And we thank God for his ministry. He is our man in Canada. Uh, we're trusting God that sometime in the future be able to start something in Canada. And we just praise the name of the Lord. And uh, 1976, I think it was, uh, I traveled to the little island of Wakenham, the Essequibo River in Guyana, and in a little village they call Nykadak in Dutch. It's a Dutch village, because remember that Guyana one time was under Dutch uh, rule, and so we've got a lot of villages in Guyana with Dutch names, Nykadak, and you know, you some people say night for dark. Well, but back then, it was really night for dark because they had no electricity back then, and so that was something else. But we thank God for what God has done, and God saved him in 1976. I was there in the revival services at a small church, and God brought him into the kingdom, and then subsequently he came away from the island into the city. Uh, so many of us in the Caribbean, you, in order for you to get some of the good jobs, you got to leave the country to get into the city. Came into the city and went to the university, and God has been good to him. And he served many years at Charlotte Street, and then while he worked at the Georgian ha Hospital, he's a radi radiographer by profession, and um, went to Linden, which is the bauxite town. And uh, when he got to Linden, he saw a young lady up there that won his heart that really won his heart. Ended up getting married. I was on my way to the wedding in Linden. And to, because we've been friends for years, he was always close to me over the years. And these are some of the people who know me well. And uh, <laughs> on his wedding day, we were in church. The church is filled with people. Can't see the bride. I'm looking down, I'm on the platform, I'm supposed to bring the word in the wedding, and this pastor at that time in Linda was performed the ceremony, but I was just bringing a little sermonette, and I looked down and I saw him sweating in his seat, no bride coming, churches filled with people from the bauxite industry and uh, from the hospital where he, he was working, but no bride. And so, you know, he's been my friend for all of these years, so he, he gave me a little signal, so I came off the platform and went next to him, he said, I don't know where Joan is. He said, can you go look and see if you can find Joan? So I said, I'll do whatever you want me to do. And so I got in my car and I drove and I went to where she lived. And uh, when I got there, Joan was dressed and some crazy uncle who was supposed to come to escort her either forgot that he had an assignment and never showed up. And the bride was in tears. And I said, my dear, it is going to happen today. I'll dry your tears, it's going to happen. It's a wonderful experience, wonderful. I took her in the arm, and took her down to the car, opened the door, put her inside, and she and I started to drive on our way to the church. 
I got to the church, and in the tradition of uh, most Caribbean islands and, and, and Guyana, when you get in there with a the bride, you honk in the horn, letting everybody know that you, you, you're nearby. And so, so I honk in the horn, he got outside of the church, uh, and I stepped out of the car, and I hooked her, and we were coming in, and the congregation burst into, into laughter because they knew that I was not the person who was the father giver. But that day I became the father giver. When the pastor said, who give it this woman to be married? I had to come down and, and I stood next to her and he said, who give it this woman to be married to this man? I said, I do. <laughs> uh, we thank God for them. Uh, four children God has blessed them with. And Joanne is here with us. She is my goddaughter. And um, we just thank God for his faithfulness and for his grace. God is a wonderful God. Amen. Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior. Thank God for Miss Juanita. You know she got the voice from me. Y'all know where she got it from. She got the voice from me. Amen. Uh, you don't want us to try that thing out, so you hear Sister Cameron sing. She got it from me. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Please go with me to the book of Joshua. We want to finish the series that we started. This is the last installment, uh, uh, Joshua chapter 1. And today we want to pick up verse 6 and ver to verse 9. Joshua chapter 1 from verse 6 to verse number 9. And we will com conclude this uh, series. Amen. Amen. I'll let you sit because just a couple of verses we would read. Let's go ahead, call it. Be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance of the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And remember what we started out by talking about? It is time to cross over. It is time to cross over. And we believe that that's what God wants us to do. It is time to cross over. It is time to cross over. We're sharing with someone not so long ago that one of the things that we ought to do as believers is not to give the enemy ammunition to shoot us. Amen. Whatever you do as a believer, don't enable the enemy or the devil to trap you or to destroy your life. Amen. By the grace of God, my desire is to make sure that I give the enemy nothing to enable him to work against me. Praise the name of the Lord. And so I want to share that with you this morning. Don't give the enemy anything to work against you. Don't enable the enemy. We can enable him, but don't enable the enemy because he's going to use it against you. Let's pick up some of the, what, what, we, what we went through before. We said early on that God, in crossing over, that there are some things that we need to take into consideration that God determines our boundaries. That's what we said, that God determines our boundaries. Man does not determine your boundary. God determines your boundary. Man might say a lot of things to you, but God is the one who has the final say. I said that to Sister Kwame on, uh, when it was, I think on Friday, when Sister Daff and Sister Cameron and I, we were here with Sister Kwame and her niece who came to visit with her. We said to her that God is the one who has the final say. God is the one who has the final say. The enemy would say all manner of things to you, but you've got to determine in your mind and in your spirit who has the final say. You have to de determine in your mind who has the final say. And so in our minds, if we allow the enemy to determine our destiny, then the enemy will destroy us. 
But God is the one who has the final say. So God determines our boundaries. And number two, we said that God decides our destiny. God decides our destiny. Your destiny is not tied to men. Amen. Your destiny is tied to the Lord. Not to men, but to God. And thank God that our destiny is tied to the Lord. You may go through some circumstances in life. You may go through some challenges in life. And we all do go through challenges in life. There is no one in this congregation today who has not gone through some challenge in life. We all go through something in life. But our destiny is tied to God. Folk might do us stuff. Folk might set traps for us. They may sabotage us and do all manner of things to us. But when you understand that your destiny is tied to God and not to what man would do or say or attempt to do, you are going to rise above that situation and you're going to do what God tells you to do. Cross over. Cross over. We said early on that crossing over is not, a, is not easy for some people. It is a challenge for some people, especially when you're bound by a tradition. And when God says to you that I want to do something differently, God had never turned water into wine. He had never turned water into wine before that wedding in Cana of Galilee. But the tradition of the people would say, well, it is impossible for this to happen because we have never seen it happen before. Hold a moment. Because you have not seen something happen before, does it mean that God can't do it? And sometimes that's how we put God into a little box. And we, we put God into a compartment. God, I know you can do this here, but this one is too big for you. You can't get it done. No, the devil is a liar. God can do anything but fail. God can do anything but fail. And so God is the one who determines our destiny, not man. And so one of the things we also said, that when God says it is time to move to the next level, don't stay at the old position because once God has moved from the old position to the new place of blessing, if you are in the place where God has left, remember that as God moves, his blessings go with him. And so if you remain in a place where God is not blessing, then you would miss the favor of God upon your life. That's one of the reasons why God leaves churches because they've long voted him out. They've long legislated God out of their midst. There is no room for him. The church becomes an organization that is governed by rules and regulations and not by the Spirit of the Lord. And so God said, this place ain't got no need of me. So I've got to move on to something else so that my, my, my purpose would be fulfilled in the earth. Glory be to the name of the Lord. You go into Europe and parts of Europe, you see some wonderful cathedrals uh, reminding us uh, of a year and a time and an era where the Spirit of God used to move. Some of them have become museums uh, because uh, God no longer dwells in those places. By the grace of God, Lighthouse will never become a museum. Lighthouse will never become a museum, will never become a museum. We want the Spirit of God to be with us and to move in our hearts and in our lives because God is constantly doing things that we don't know and we've never seen before hallelujah so god determines our destiny and uh, our destiny is not tied to our past our destiny is tied to god we might have had a past and all of us here today no matter how old you are or young you are you have a past are you still here this morning you have a past but one of the beautiful things about it is that God delivers us uh, from uh, our past. Uh, and he sets us free. I don't have to go back uh, to my past. I don't have to go back to that life anymore because God has liberated me and brought me into newness of life. And so I walk in newness of life. Uh, I walk in newness of life. Uh, I told you last week as we were going through this, this, this particular installment that uh, in a particular time in the Caribbean, because of your color, you could not work in Barclays Bank. You could not work in Bank of Nova Scotia. You couldn't work in the Royal Bank of Canada. You couldn't get a, a job in those banks because your color wasn't right. Are you, do you remember? You couldn't. And there's some schools you couldn't get in to get a teaching job. But thank God for liberation. Some of you don't remember any of that kind of stuff. Especially the young ones who remember anything like that. But that was a time, that was an era when you could not. But thank God that our destiny is tied to the Lord. Tied to the Lord. And our final uh, installment today in this series is that 
God determines our success. God determines our success. He determines our success. God says in verse number 6, Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide an inheritance, the in, for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. And God said to him, If you only obey me and follow me, you are going to enjoy success. One of the things we know about our God is that he would not lead us to failure and defeat. Amen. He would not lead us to failure and defeat. It doesn't matter what the society says. It doesn't matter what the handwriting on the wall is. God will not lead us to failure and defeat. He will lead us to success. He will lead us to success. God's desire is for us to be successful and prosperous. To be successful and prosperous. To succeed in what we put our hands upon to do. That's what the word says. Uh, the righteous, whatever the righteous will put his hand upon, God said it is going to prosper because of being righteous. You see, when the greater one lives inside of you, who is Jesus, uh, whatever you as a child of God put your hand upon to do will succeed because God is with you. And once you hold on, once you stay faithful and committed to what God is saying and what God is doing, God is going to cause you to succeed. I am not discouraged in any shape or form. Let me tell you why. I remember when, and I, I bring this up to you again and again. I remember when I went to the Charlotte Street Church in 1992, in the middle of the church here, because of a problem that they had there. And just, the church was a large church and it was empty. People weren't there. But I said, God is going to help us. God is going to help us. Not everybody believed that God was going to help us. Not every believer would believe that God is going to help us. You think that every one of us who were in the school believed that God would bring us out of the school? Not everybody did believe that. Some people say, well, we ain't too sure, you know. We, 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 it's a nice thing, but we, we're not too sure. Friday night I was saying to the men, we prayed like we never prayed before over six or 700 at Delphi Road. If you remember, we prayed like we never prayed before over six or 700 at Delphi Road. God gave us, and every time I drove by going to PG Plaza, I would say, Lighthouse. Every time I passed there, I would say, Lighthouse. I would just look over and say, Lighthouse. You think that I, would, that I would be discouraged by the fact that God had something else in store? Sometimes God will allow us to pray over one thing, but God has something better in store. You might see a particular thing and say, well, this is it. Uh, God, this is it. I'm praying for it. Keep on praying. Keep on believing God because God will lead us to success. Lead us to success. Lead us to success. When the church became packed with people and those who didn't believe that it was going to happen started, when they, when they came late, they had to sit in some of them steel chairs that we sat on yesterday. And don't talk about yesterday. Carol reminded us of the school yesterday when we started packing up them chairs and folding them. I said, oh God, you're reminding us of the past here. Yesterday, yesterday. Thank God it's a yesterday situation, not a present day reality. The point is that God would lead us to success. He would lead us uh, to success. Many of us think of success only in terms of dollars and cents. That's how we think of success. Only in terms of dollars and cents. You can be more rich than Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs, the, one of the men who developed the Apple phone and the iPad and all of this kind of stuff, he was a billionaire. Had a lot of money. A lot of money. You would consider him to be successful. But the man had, had colon cancer and he died from it. So I'm saying to you, I'm making the point that many of us think of success only in terms of dollars and cents. It is more than pecuniary accomplishments. It is more than money. When you stand in the name of Jesus and confront the devil and his agents and defeat them, that is success. Are you hearing me this morning? When you stand and confront the devil in the name of Jesus and defeat his plans and his purpose in your life, that is success. When you have your health... Oh, let me say it again for you. 
I should have said that early on, but let me say to you now, when you have your health and you are healthy and you're able to, to do what God wants you to do, that is success. Uh, let me tell you something. You may have all the money that's working off uh, and you are sick and you can't enjoy the money that you have. I was listening, I was watching a documentary about Tommy Hilfiger's daughter who was sick and couldn't, uh, and so many, so many things were just happening to the young woman. She had to move from New York to California because something about New York, she would get sick. They spent hundreds upon hundreds of thousands of dollars to get her, to get her well. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, success when you have your health, you have a success because if you're healthy, God can use you to accomplish a number of things if you're healthy. I've gone to the hospitals and I've seen young men and old men, young women and older women lying in that place and can't do anything to help themselves. And they will give anything possible to be healthy, to be healthy, to be healthy. I sat there on Friday and heard Sister Kwamina praying and out of the depth of our spirit, she's saying, oh God, remove this thing out of my body. Remove it. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, some, some of us don't know how fortunate we are. We complain over this and we complain over that rather than give God thanks and give God praise and honor that you are healthy and you can do what God wants you to do. My brothers and sisters, God determines our success. He determines our success. He determines when the favor of God or the favor of Yahweh is upon your life. There is nothing that can compare or even come close when the favor of God is upon your life. When the favor of God is upon your life, there is nothing that can come close when the favor of God. Because if the favor of God is upon your life, he'll open doors for you. He'll open doors to you. You walk through doors that the devil close and say to you and laugh at you and say it will never open. Where are those folks who say we will never get out of the school? Where are those folks today? God is still a good God. The devil does not determine your success. Last week, the devil was trying to fool with my mind. Fool with my mind. I came in the office and we were doing some work. I was doing some work in the office there. And as I was there, Juanita came over with all the bills to church to be paid. And you know, that could be a stressful time when the bills got to be paid. And she came into my office uh, so I can sign some of the, the vouchers and the checks so that they can go on and take care of business. Then she had a, a bill from Pepco. And when she came to me with this bill from Pepco, at the bottom of the bill, Pepco had 3000 Six hundred and something or eight hundred and something dollars as surcharge. And the total bill is four thousand something dollars. So I said, what surcharge are they talking about? Something ain't right about this thing. Surcharge or what? What are you surcharging us for? Why is it surcharging business? So I said, something got to be wrong about this. Let me tell you, the enemy could mess with your peace if you're not careful. Surcharge. Surcharge for what? They sent the letter apologizing this was a mistake after. Uh, let me tell you something. God is a good God. God is a good God. We could have been there sweating because you got to make sure. Let me tell you, when you go home and you, you are resting in your home and, you, and everything is going all right, you expect me to make sure that when you drive back here in this parking lot, in the parking lot, that you can get in this building and you can come in here and worship God and give God praise and give God thanks. Oh, like you didn't expect me. Oh, I probably need to not. And so what I'm saying to you, is when the favor of God is upon your life, there is nothing that can compare or even come close. When you know that the resources of heaven is standing with you in the ongoing battle with the forces of hell, that is success. When you know that God is standing with you in the fight that you're in, 
That is success. You know the enemy is punching at you. You know the enemy is, is, is trying to mess with you. But here is God coming true for you in the midst of all of this stuff. That is success, my brothers and sisters. So if you only think of success in terms of dollars and cents, when the battles of life come against you and the devil will hit against you, you are going to fall apart because you believe success only comes when you have money. My brothers and sisters, the people with money and the are not happy. Are they not happy? They are not happy. Three times in the text, God said to Joshua, Be strong and of a good courage. Be strong and of a good courage. Three times in the text, God said to Joshua, Be strong. Why would God say to Joshua, Be strong? Because God is aware that Joshua, there are some enemies you're going to face and a weak believer would not be able to overcome these enemies. You've got to be strong. You just can't continue to feed on milk all the time. You've got to move from milk to eating bread and to eating bones and to eating stuff that, 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 that strong people would eat. You can't be a believer for years and you're still drinking milk. Somebody pass you by and tell you believe in your mind that they got something against you. Get your mind under the blood of Jesus. The person probably thinking about their own problems and their own challenge that they got to deal with the next day. And they didn't even think that, 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 that they passed you by. I drove by people on the road and I did not see them and they saw me. Now if you, if you see me, you got a, a responsibility to say, hey, or blow your horn. Don't think that I, that I see you because I drive past you. I saw you because I, I drove past you. Sometimes we attach meaning to things that got no meaning. And the devil would use that situation to disrupt your relationship with people because you're putting meaning to something that the other person is not even thinking about. So three times he says, be strong and have a good courage. It is very important for us to understand that it takes strength and courage to cross over. In everything in life, it takes strength and courage to cross over. Especially when people tell you, you can't get it done. And nobody like you has ever been successful in this particular situation. The devil is a liar. You are not nobody. You are somebody in Jesus Christ. People tell you that you can't get the job, that you don't have the qualification, you don't have the looks, you don't have the image. The devil is a liar. If God's favor is upon your life, it doesn't matter what man says. If God opens the door, all you need to do is walk through the door. And when God opens the door, the Bible says no man can close the door. No man can close the door. No man can close the door. The enemy will try but no man can close the door. No man can close the door because God opens the door. So three times he says in the text, be of a good courage. And so it's important for us to understand that it takes courage and strength to cross over. When you cross from one place to another, you are not certain and, and are not certain about your environment and the variables which can emerge. You have to be strong and courageous. When we were in the school, we paid no light bill. Oh, let me say it again. When we were in the school, we paid no light bill. We had no business with Pepco while we were in the school. We only paid light bill for the house that I live in. Nothing to do with no paying no commercial light bill. Here is not a domestic, domestic reality. This is a commercial building. And as a commercial building, the rates are completely different. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? And so, when you're going to cross over, when you cross from one place to another, and you're not certain about your environment, and the variables which can emerge, you have to be strong and courageous. When we came into this building, we not only had to pay for electricity, we've got to pay for gas. You come during winter when the gas is going to kick in. Now the gas bill is very low because we don't use much of the gas to run the air conditioning. But when winter kicks in and heat started to flow in this place, then the next thing you know, you got the gas bill is going to, it's going to go up. Not only that, but understand that we also got to pay to the county 
for the usage of uh, the, 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 the storm drains around here where the water that comes off of the, the roof uh, and goes into the sewer system. Do you know we've got to pay for those things? We never paid for those things when we were in the school. We just go in there, pay for the hours uh, that we use and gone. Are you still here this morning, my brothers and sisters? I am telling you that when you're moving to a new environment, to a new level in God, there are variables and there are things that can come your way. That's why God said to Joshua, as you cross over from one place to the other place, you got to be courageous and you got to be strong because there's some things that are going to come along your pathway. If you don't have strength to deal with them, they are going to intimidate you. But by the grace of God, we are not going to be intimidated by any situation, any circumstance, because our God still sits on the throne and he is still God and he's not abdicated his responsibility so it doesn't matter what the devil would do it doesn't matter what games or tricks the enemy would bring God is able to help us are you hearing me this morning saints fearful and unbelieving people would not cross over or even expect to be successful Fearful people, fearful and unbelieving people would not cross over or even expect to be successful. Because fear would determine your destiny if you allow it. Because when fear takes control of your life, you're not going to move to the next level because you're, a fear, you're afraid of failing. Anyone who is successful in life had to overcome the fear of failure. What you do is learn from the, the failure or the mistake so that you don't make the same mistake at the next level because we learn from mistakes of the past. I've had pastors who've come to me and said to me that, you know what, we, we bought this building in this particular area where you don't just buy any building. You just don't buy any building, especially if it was a commercial building and you want to turn it into a church. You just can't buy any building in any area. You first got to find out, is this area zone for a church? Is there an existing church in the area? Because if there is not an existing church and you buy a commercial building and the existing building is not a thousand feet away from another church building, you are not going to get a permit for the building that you have so that you can use it. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? And so when you got some cousin who is a little realtor in a corner and just looking for his little commission... And you give him the job and he is not going about to investigate all the variables in the area. When you sign on the dotted line and he gets his commission, he is not obligated to you. He is gone and you are saddled with a building that you cannot use. Oh, you're not hearing me, my brothers. You don't understand some of the work that we had to put in to get into this building. If you understand some of the things that we had to make sure that we cover because we could have spent all that money and got a building that we can't use. There is a pastor right in our area who bought a building. For nine years he's got this building. He's paying the bank and he can't use it. He came over here and he said, I want to I wanna find from you. How were you able to use this place? Is some little hustler he took as a real estate agent. You, leave, look, leave these little hustlers alone in the corner. Sometimes, my brothers and sisters, and we as Caribbean people need to understand, and as Latinos, we need to understand that cheap is not always good. Oh, y'all not hearing me this morning. Cheap is not always good. Because when you think you're saving money, you are losing money because you are being cheap. Tell the person next to you, don't be cheap. Lord have mercy. I know you're scared to tell the person next to you, don't be cheap. You think they'll slap you. They can't slap you. Pastor said to you to tell them, don't be cheap. Back home in the Caribbean, if I invite uh, Pastor Claxton to dinner, I say, Pastor Claxton, we're going out for dinner tonight. Uh, his understanding is uh, I am paying for the dinner. Uh, th th that's the understanding. If I invite you to dinner, the understanding is uh, I am footing the bill. I am not asking you to foot nothing. Oh, it's a whole different ball game here altogether. When somebody says, I'm inviting you, to, you better walk with money in your pocket because when they get the, pay, when they get the, the check or the bill from the, from the folk there, they, start, they, start, they become a mathematician. 
Well, your portion of this thing is this amount. The, and the, what strangeness is this? If I invite you to dinner, I am picking up the bill. Are you hearing me? Not so. You got to understand the different culture. When they just divide up the bill, they pay for their food. You got to pay for you, even though they invite you. If you ain't got money, they call the police, and you in trouble. Well, you could put right or I or you here, but you can write I or you at the restaurant. People looking for the money, or they call the police, and you going down, you going down to that jailhouse in Hyattsville. Fearful and unbelieving people would not cross over or even expect to be successful. We cannot allow fear to determine our success nor our destiny. God told Joshua that there are conditions which must be met for him and the people to be successful. God told Joshua clearly that there are conditions that he and the people got to meet in order for them to be successful. And sometimes we don't want to meet those conditions in order to be successful. I know, I have known people who want to be successful but don't want to do the right thing. I know people who operate like that, but you're not going to be successful doing the wrong thing. The first thing that God said to Joshua, and we want to pick them up. There, let me see how many of them I have, and we'll be done. There's six of them, and I'll deal with them very quickly. Number one, God says, observe and obey the word of the Lord. That's what God said to Joshua. Observe and obey the word. If I observe, which means that I'm paying attention to the word, but God don't only want, God don't only want me to pay attention to the word. He wants me to obey the word. He wants me to obey the word. He wants me to obey the word. Some of us struggle at that level with our walk with God. We hear the word. But the obeying part is a different story altogether. It's both. You've got to do both, my brothers and sisters, in order to be successful. You not only need to observe the word, but you need to obey the word. You need to obey the word. You need to obey the word. Secondly, God says... Uh, do not deviate from the principles and precepts of God's word. No matter what society says, no matter what is happening around you, God said to Joshua, don't deviate. Don't leave. Don't walk away. Don't move yourself away from the word. If you're going to be blessed, if you're going to be successful, you're going to cross over and be successful. God says, stick with the word. Stick with the word. Yes, your circumstance might look funny, but stick with the word. Yes, your situation might be funny. Your money might be funny. People might be funny around you. Stick with the word. Stick with the word. If you stick with the word, God is going to come true because God cannot lie. God cannot lie. He is going to come true. At some point in time, he is going to come true for you. He's going to come true for you. He's going to come true for you. So he says, don't deviate from the principles and the precepts of the word. Yes, I need the money, but I don't have to go buy a lottery ticket. Boy, I feel something there, Brother Keita. I, I, I felt something there just now. I felt something there just now. I don't have to deviate from the word. I, I abide by the principles of the word that you as a believer, you, you, you break in the line to get to the front of the get a lottery ticket because you won't get the power ball. I hear it on the news. They don't keep it quiet when they're talking about this power ball and all this other story. Don't deviate from the principles of the, and the precepts of God's word. God is able to bring you through. He's able to bring you through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number three, if you diligently follow the word of God, your prosperity is assured wherever you go. That's what God says. If you diligently follow the word of God, your prosperity is assured wherever you go. When we were doing construction here, at one point in time I was using my my debit card to do a little bit of purchasing of some of the stuff that we needed here and there. And one day, when I looked at my debit card after doing all of those purchases, 45 cents in my debit card. 45 cents. That's a lot of money, boy. 45 cents. I got other bills, personal bills to pay. 45 cents. And I said, God... I have given to your work. 
I got bills that I got to pay because some people think that I don't have no bills to pay. Like you, I got a car. No, I don't drive the church car. The church got a van. That's not my van. That's the church van. I signed for it. It's attached to my name in order because at the time we didn't have the kind of credit to get it as a church. And so I had to attach my name and social security number and everything to it so we can get the, the loan for the van. But I have my own car to drive. I pay my own car note. And there are times when the thing is coming up and it got to be paid. 45 cents. 45 cents. It can't work. 45 cents can't work. But you know what? Even though 45 cents is the daft, I have never missed a payment. Ne you're not hearing me this morning. Even though 45 cents is never missed a payment. Because God is faithful and he determines our success. Because if you look at your reality all the time and you're just dealing with your natural reality, you're not opening a door for God to work even in that situation. And God has a way of proving himself when the situation looks impossible. Oh, glory be to the name of the Lord. You shouldn't get it. You shouldn't be there. You shouldn't get the promotion. You shouldn't get the job. You should not get it. But God says your success is not determined by man. Your success is determined by God. And God says if you diligently follow the word of God, your prosperity is assured wherever you go. Whether you are in Timbuktu or Tubuk Timbuk, wherever you are, God says I am going to bless you. I am going to bless you. I am going to prosper you because you diligently follow my word. Joseph was in Egypt in Potiphar's house and the Bible says that as a result of Joseph in the house of the Egyptian, the Egyptian became prosperous as a result of a blessed man in his house. If you're a child of God and you're diligently following the word of God, it doesn't matter where God sends you because God is with you. The place before you were there was not blessed but because you are there now, that place that was cursed is now a blessed place because you are there. Oh, glory be to God. Some of us don't even understand who we are and whose we are. God gave us a job and we fussing and complaining about the place and the next thing you know, we can't even bless the place. And the place become a hindrance to us because we don't understand the principle. We, if, if you understand the principle that you can turn that environment into a place, a blessed place. And if the place gets blessed and the place is prosperous, you are going to be prosperous too. Glory be to God. Before teacher Khaled got the job at the school, she was volunteering at the school. Is that right, teacher Khaled? Volunteering at the school. She was eminently qualified, more qualified for the job that she was doing or the, or the level that she was teaching. But she volunteered. Nobody paying you when you're volunteering. You're going there every day, volunteering, 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 and just believing God that my purpose will be fulfilled. My potential will be realized. My destiny is not tied to my reality. And God, you're going to do it. And the next thing you know, the principal caught eyes caught her and realized that this is somebody that should be hired and God opened the door and favor came she got the job oh, you're not hearing me not only got the job then God started to do some other things for her even at that school when people didn't even think that somebody who just got the job should even be given a position that she holds when you are a blessed person wherever you go God is going to bless you he is going to bless you the workplace doesn't have to be a bondage to you it could be a place of success because of who lives in Inside of you, we complain too much. Are you not hearing me this morning? We complain too much, and when we're complaining, we're not giving God an opportunity to do anything for us. Oh, I wish I can preach more. I wish I can I can stay on this stuff here. I wish I can stay on this a longer time. God opens the door. You've been praying for it, and God opens the door, and all you're doing is complaining, 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 complaining. And they're outside of the door, hundreds of people hoping they can have the same job that you have and they can't get it. And God give it to you. And rather than you tell God, I thank you for it. I thank you for it. I thank you for it. Are you still here this morning? 
If you diligently follow the word of God, your prosperity is assured wherever you go. Number four, God says to Joshua, the book of the law must not, must not depart out of your mouth. The word must not leave your mouth. The word must be in your mouth. Rather than you declaring negativity over your situation, by the grace of God, I am going to succeed. By the grace of God, I am going to overcome. By the grace of God, I am going to cross over all of these obstacles in my pathway. By the grace of God, every hindrance of the devil put in my pathway, I am going to overcome them because the word is in my mouth and I am declaring the word over my situation and the word will not return void. It will accomplish all that God God says it will accomplish. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He sends his word for my healing. He sends his word for my deliverance. Yes, I'm feeling a little thing in my hip, but by the grace of God, by his stripes, I am healed. Yes, the 45 cents is in my account, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. God is going to come true and do something for me. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Glory be to the name of the Lord. The word, the word must not depart out of your mouth. It must not depart out of your mouth. It must not depart out of your mouth. I ain't going to gossip. I ain't talking about the name. I'm going to do what I need to do. Because the word, the word, the word, the word is in my mouth. And as I release it, because power and the life and death is in the power of the tongue. And the tongue is what declares the word. And therefore, I am not going to be a messenger of death. I am a messenger of life. I am going to be a messenger of life. In a dead situation, I am speaking life over it. Life over it. Because the word, number five. God says, meditate in the word of God day and night. Meditate, spend time, spend time with the word, spend time with the word, spend time with the word. When I read the word, when I meditate in the word, even though I have it uh, electronically and I can look at it from an electronic, standpoint but I have now again I go back I still have in you you come to my office you will see different translation of the word of God in my office on my desk this one is a son, this is my Sunday Bible but there is a study Bible with all kinds of markup and write up and scribble and scratching and on the lining and all kinds of stuff and all kinds of pieces are posted here and a post it there and a post. I don't trust my mind because I might forget when God is talking to me I I, I gotta be conscious of my age and so I can't do like what some of the young folk would do. I got to write stuff. I got to write stuff down. I got to write stuff down because I don't want to forget it. Because the devil can steal it from me. So I write it down. And when I want it, I go back to it. In my Bible Friday night, uh, we were in men's fellowship. Uh, and Brother Isaacs was, was conducting the men's fellowship and teaching something. And then suddenly a passage he came up with. And suddenly the Lord said to me, you know this passage? I said, Isaacs, you've given me the sermon for the, ne the next sermon series. And I said, look at the verse that God gave, gave to me. I said, I'm going to expand on this thing so much that you won't even see, know the verse when you see it. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. God says, meditate, spend time with the word. Spend time with the word. Spend time with the word. The more of the word inside of you is the more powerful you become and you're able to declare what is inside of you. You cannot declare what is not inside of you. If you're not reading it, how are you going to declare it? If you're not meditating on it, how are you going to declare it? It is not abracadabra. That don't work. Are you not hearing me this morning? It is not abracadabra. That stuff is not going to work. You've got to declare the word. It is not luck. It is the favor of God upon your life. The favor of God upon your life. The favor of God upon your life. Number six. Not only should you meditate on the Word of God day and night, which means you spend time with the Word of the Lord, live according to the Word of God, not the opinions of men. Live according to the Word of God, not the opinions of men. Everybody got an opinion. Everybody got an opinion. Everybody, even a fool got an opinion too. Are you hearing me? Even a fool has an opinion, but I am not living by the opinions of men. I live by the word of God because people's opinion will change. It will change. It will change. It will change. And you cannot trust the opinions of men. It is going to change. 
And the thing that is not going to change is the Word of God. The Word of God is not going to change. But when I live by the opinions of men, they change. They're going to change, especially if you can't give them what they're asking for. Son, you become a miserable person. You're no good anymore. But when, remember those days when you were good and you were dealing out stuff and giving to them? Every, you, you became the bank. And you, not only the bank, you became the food pantry. And you always, uh, they come to you, hey, hey sister, sister Cameron, where you got there to eat? I got bakes and I got saltfish, I got roti, I got curry. And the day you can't deliver that kind of stuff, suddenly... You're no longer that nice person anymore. Anybody still here today? Anybody still here? When I told a man that you can't be sleeping in church with all these women you're sleeping with, and he was in leadership in the church, when I told him this, this, is, this is an insult and an embarrassment to the word of God and the kingdom of God, and you're on a, you in a leadership position in the church, and you got five women in this church, and you're sleeping around with these women, and in leadership in the church, and I said, it cannot happen under my watch as a pastor. It cannot happen. Oh, he didn't like it. He didn't like it, and so he became offended by it. The church is reduced to just a social club when we live like that and conduct ourselves like that. But we need to live according to the word of God. For 35 years, I've been married to the same young woman. For 35 years, I've been married to the same young woman. Woman, 35 years. I told somebody, I said, you think that we've never disagreed with each other? We've disagreed with each other. We've disagreed with each other, but our disagreement never got to the level where we became so angry with each other that we can't talk to each other and we cannot say anything to each other. We're different. We are different. We will disagree. She is Sister Whitehead. I'm Brother Blackhead. We will disagree with each other. But we allow little things and simple things uh, to destroy and disrupt our relationship with each other. When the word says, uh, enjoy your life with the wife of your youth, the Bible is saying that youth is a passing phase uh, of your life. During the time you're fighting and fussing when you should be enjoying yourself. If arthritis hits you, suddenly you can't come out of the bed and you're struggling and all kinds of stuff going on with you. You can't even move uh, and your back hurting you, your knee hurting you, your eyes hurting you, your toe hurting you. Everything hurting you. You need to enjoy your relationship with each other. Because let me tell you, tomorrow is not promised to any man. I've seen, let me tell you something. I went three weeks ago, three, maybe just over three weeks ago, to New Jersey. This is a camera and I drove to my friend's 60th birthday celebration out in New Jersey. August the 13th, we drove out there. And I saw my friend's brother. Looking slim and trim. I went up to the man. I said, man, Chappy, you're really looking good, man. Things looking, things going good. Things looking good. Monday, I think we came around here just to check by the building on Monday because we don't come in here on Monday. The office is closed. And the building is closed on Monday. And my friend calling me from New Jersey. I saw his, saw, saw, saw his name on my phone. I said, hey, Julian, what's going on? And he said, man, I got bad news. I said, what bad news you got? What happened to you? I thought the man was going to tell me that they diagnosed him with some strange disease. He said, man, we found Chappie dead in his house. I said, but Chappie looked so good the other day when we saw him. He said, we call him a Chappie and we can't hear from him. So his other brother went to his house and called him, can't get him. They broke the door. When they broke the door and went in there, Chappie is on the floor dead. 62 years old, dead. And we sometimes don't understand. And we fool around even when God has given us opportunities, 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 opportunities God has made available to us. And we fussing and fighting and complaining and bickering over stupidness. And God says, no, don't do it. And we fuss in over these things that don't mean anything. My brothers and sisters, live according.
to the word of the Lord. Let me conclude. For us to get what God has in store, we must display courage and strength in the face of opposition. Crossing over doesn't guarantee that it would be smooth sailing all the time. But if you obey the word of God and diligently follow what God says, then you will have a good success. God says if you, that life would deal you some, some unusual blows. But as you walk with God, as you honor God, as you do what God says you ought to do, God is going to see you through. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. So it is time to cross over. You've got to cross over from fear, cross over from doubt, cross over from unforgiveness, cross over from, from malice, cross over from envy, cross over from jealousy, cross over from gossip, cross over from all these petty stuff because I want to be what God wants me to be. Stand with me everybody this morning. I want to pray with some of you. Tomorrow's a holiday some of you are going to place. I know we've gone over time but some of you are going to place. There's some stuff in your life you need to cross over. I want to pray with you. A general prayer this morning. God break those yokes over your life. God set you free and set you at liberty. If you're here with your heads bowed and your eyes closed quickly God I want to cross over. It's time for me to cross over. Cross over lack. Cross over fear. Cross over a poverty mentality. The mentality, the mentality, the mindset. I want to cross over this stuff. I want to cross over doubt. I want to cross over unforgiveness. I want to cross over all of these things that Pastor mentioned this morning. I want to cross over. If you're here this morning, don't waste time. Come quickly. We want to pray that God broke, break these things, set you free so that you be what God wants you to be. Fear must not control your life. God determines your success and He determines your destiny. But these things can hold you back and cause you to fail. And some of you people have spoken negatively over your life. And you believe what they said more than what God said. I was not supposed to be anything. I was not supposed to be anything. I was supposed to follow the example of my father who was not an example. But by the grace of God, he left. But I have stayed for 35 years. I don't know what your situation or I don't know what your circumstance is. But God is able to break the yoke over your life. God said to Joshua, it's time to cross over. Bring Moses is dead. Bring you can't stay in a dead situation. God said, you've got to cross over. You've got to cross over. You've got to take these people with you. You can't leave them. You've got to take them with you. You've got to take them with you. You've got to understand after God has set you free from that stuff, you don't go back to it. You don't go back to it. You don't go back to it. When God said to Joshua, you're blessed when God took Joseph out of Egypt or out of the land of Canaan into Egypt. In the house of Potiphar, he was a blessed man. In the house of Pharaoh, he was a blessed man. And the Egyptians took notice that a blessed man is in this place. And that's why for seven years of famine, God took care of Egypt because a blessed man was there who told him that, look, you need to save up the grains. So when the seven year of fam the seven years of famine will come, you have enough stuff to survive and to be successful. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. The word is clear that faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. If we believe God, God will do what God alone can do. The storms might be blowing against you and against your life, but God controls the storm. He still says, peace, be still. He still says, peace, be still. Would we believe him today? Would we believe him today? Would we believe him today, saints? Would we believe him today? Would we believe him today? Would we believe him today? Would we believe God who is a God of the impossible? Break every chain. I want to pray. I want to pray. Break every chain. Words as if two of us shall agree and earn us touching anything it shall be done. Chain. If you agree with me and we agree with God, Break God will do the work. Break every chain. If you're Break doubting every God, you're wasting chain. time at this altar. Break every but if you're going to believe God, then God Break is going to do something chain. in your heart Break and in your life. Chain. Holy Ghost. Break Holy Ghost. Break every 
Holy Ghost, we call upon you this morning to manifest the miracle power in the lives of your people here today. Everything that the enemy brought to us in our pathway, Father, we are crossing over in the name of Jesus. We're crossing over fear. We're crossing over doubt. We're crossing over unbelief. We're crossing over envy. We're crossing over unforgiveness. We're crossing over all of the things that the enemy brought to us, Father, in the name of Jesus. Malice and gossip and all of this stuff. We're crossing over in the name of Jesus. We're crossing over in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We're crossing over them. Unbelief we're crossing over. In the name of Jesus. We're crossing over. Cynicism we're crossing over. We're crossing over these things. Lack on and my God and the mentality, the poverty mentality. We're crossing over in the name of Jesus. We're crossing over, Father. You said that wherever we go, we are going to prosper because you're going with us. And so today, Father, in the name of Jesus, we break these yokes. We break the yoke of no success over our lives. In the name of Jesus, to success, to success, to success, to liberation in God, to liberty in God, to liberty in the Spirit of God. Destroy the yoke. Destroy the yoke. Thank you for destroying and dismantling these yokes. In the name of Jesus, uh, thank you for dismantling these yokes. Uh, in the name of Jesus, that we are going to move forward because of you. We are going to be blessed because of you, Father. And we declare over our lives, uh, we are the head and not the tail. We are above and not defeated because of Jesus. We give you praise and give you thanks for what you've already done. And we leave all these yokes at this altar. And we're not going back to our seats with them because we've the given them to you, Jesus. Falling. And we thank you for your liberty. And we thank you for the freedom that you've given unto us. Cross over sickness, cross over disease, 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 cross over aches, cross over pain, cross over all of these things. In the name of Jesus, we cross over them. And we give you glory. And we give you glory. And we give you glory. Come on and bless the name of the Lord. Give the Lord a, a shout of praise. A shout of praise for crossing over, 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 for crossing over. I'm not going to be the same. For crossing over, for crossing over. Hallelujah. 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 It's not going to be the same. It's not going to be the same. It's not going to be the same. Because I've crossed over. I've crossed over. I have crossed over. I have crossed over. I've crossed over. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. I have crossed over. I have crossed over. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, I'll live by your word. I'll meditate on your word. I'll spend time in your word. I'm not going to allow myself to get so busy that I can't spend time in your word. Because your word is going to liberate everything around me. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Come on, give me another round of applause this morning. God bless you as you go back to your seat. Come back in victory. Knowing that you have crossed over. Knowing that you have done what? You have crossed over. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Clock seven with this business when you're done. Still Praise the name of the Lord. High on 
We have crossover, and I want to thank God for the message this morning, Pastor. Amen. Thank God for that message this morning. And we heard in the message the many testimonies of crossing over. When we allow God to do what He alone can do in our lives, watch Him work. We thank God this morning for our oh, Pastor John, our Pastor John Goddard. He's at the back. He don't want to come in front, and his brother-in-law. Brother Kirk and his brother-in-law's wife, Sister Vanessa. You remember Brother Kirk came and he was treated. Now he's living here. Him and his family and his two sons. They are living here, his wife and two sons. He, happy to have you. You know, you all know Pastor John is part of Lighthouse, right? Regardless how he feels. So he's part of Lighthouse. He maintains the, um, what is it, Pastor? All the plumbing for this building, even before we had the building, he was the plumber for this building. So that was a blessing. That was a plus for us when we bought the building. Pastor John, we love you and Sister Ruth and the children. And we look forward to many more better days with you all. Amen. Just wanted to send some love by you, by you there. <laughs> and so this morning we have um, lunch is ready. It's ready already. Regardless what is happening, lunch will be ready on Sunday. No, you are watching me. I'm not too sure. Sister Cameron, you're going to sustain this? Yes. God is a good God. He, he makes a provision. Costco give me gift cards to buy for you. Costco give me gift cards to buy for this church. So, you know, once Sister Cameron is involved, nobody can say no to Sister Cameron. We want to thank God for them. And then we will start our distribution um, for, the, for the public. As a matter of fact, the Bellsville Police Precinct is helping us with that too. I haven't gone to them yet because I don't want the flush, a fl you know, flood of people coming in and then we're not ready for it. So we have to prepare. Where is Diana? They're all gone already on that side. So, um, but Alvarado and Chris and Sister Ruth, we had to pull you in because we weren't seeing. There was a little mix up with the communication. They thought I said, but Alvarado was going to pick Chris up from home. So when I called, they were on their way here, and so they. Dropped Ruth off, and then Chris went with Brother Alvarado to Fairfax. These are one and two spotting calls that they would ask me to go. Because they said, Sister Cameron, you're very consistent. You don't give us any troubles at Trader Joe's. So we want to thank God for Sir Man and Celestial Manor for the pickup. They pick up from several places. They, they, have the don they receive donations from several food chains. So we don't know what's going to happen yet. We want to thank God for Sir um, Charlie Mann, his rabbi man and his team for allowing us this privilege. So there are lots of stuff available today. I went last night, as Pastor said, he, you know, Pastor would look at me and he want to know if I'm crazy. I'm not crazy, Pastor. My head is good. Very well on my shoulder, right? And I love him so much, you know? Pastor, I love you. Yeah, so he would, he would look at me and wonder if I'm doing all that. I know, Joel, it sounds a little crazy. But, you know, when I think about the goodness of God, I think about you. So when they call me, I always think about the lighthouse and the community. That is why I would go. And I don't feel tired doing it because it's a blessing doing it. If you, when you go out there, you will see what's happening outside there. And I may have to call another organization to come and take off the rest from us. So we want to thank God for food. I know, just before 2 o'clock, right? And Pastor Brian was down. So I said, Pastor Brian, you're up. I think he was waiting to see when I was coming in before he go up to sleep. So when I reached, you know, Dawn was there last night. Like, we called Dawn out of her bed. We said, Dawn, we got to help pack. And she came and, and she helped with Adele and, and Cleon. So we did well last night. Karen, every now and again, we may call you. I don't know if Brother Gordon, if he listen, will, will, you know, allow you to come. We can see what can happen. But we want to thank God. But Eddie, take note, coming up, 
coming up. You know, my sister Cameron started pointing to you all things. But Eddie was one of those big um, truck drivers in, in Suriname at a gold company. So we know that he could drive by the mill. So you have somebody here who could help us too. So I'm talking to you. So Chris, don't. Chris, it's time you get that thing right with light. How's you know? Chris. Yeah, don't watch back. Same Chris. Mm hmm. Chris. Time you get this whole thing right with you and Jesus and Lighthouse so you can be on team. Chris is watching me. That's Brother Robert's friend. So we want to thank God for his merciful kindness towards us. And I want us to um, pray for Sister Kwame. Now, you all remember that name? I didn't see her here today. She was supposed to be here. But keep praying for her. The doctors have spoken. They said this is it. But we know Jesus ain't finished yet. It ain't over until he says it's over. Okay? So keep praying for her. We don't know what the next. As Pastor said, be careful how you walk because you don't know what is the next moment. Okay, church? And Sister Desri, stand at them to see you, Pastor Terry. Could you turn the camera so his, her husband could see her from Guyana? For those of you from Jamaica and Guyana, NIS, which is like Social Security here, her husband was second in charge in Guyana, and they came to bring their daughter to Howard. She's in Howard. And Stan Shondes and Stan Josiah, her grandson. So they're leaving us this week, Saturday, but they can be here on Wednesday. We want to bless God for you. It was a privilege having you. and. I know when we go to Ghana, I could, un I could already anticipate what Pastor Terry, because he already spoke to me. He just sent me a little word that his daughter going to be here, and we did the rest. Thank you, Sister Marvel and Sister Peaches, and all of you lighters who contributed towards her, get, her daughter getting into Howard. It's hard when you come here as strangers, and you, know, you don't know what you're doing, but you have people who could stand up with you. So thank you very much. And then our Suriname, for those of you who don't know, we have a Surinamese family here. Stand at them, see who you are. Come on, Surinamese. Please remember to love them up. They're new here, and so we want to make them comfortable, okay? Sister Anne came to help prepare the macaroni and cheese that you are going to be eating today. She came to collect the stuff, and you know what? The devil doesn't like when we do anything at Lighthouse. But you know what? We don't like him too, but we got Jesus who loves us. She came and she said, I'm sitting in front waiting on her, and she says, Sister Cameron, I fell down. We have some boards that dig some holes in the front there. And so she, her, one of her foot went, went in the hole and she fell down, and, and the foot started hurting her. So I went for the oil, prayed for her, and we, she was gone on her way, and I came to put the oil back here and couldn't walk down off the altar. And I said, Satan, no, yeah, you didn't know that, right? I said, no, Satan, you lie. Because I prayed for her, and now my foot, this foot cannot step. I said, what? I said, no, mm -mm. try with somebody else, not me. And I prayed my own foot there, and I went down. So, you know, we don't take anything for granted, huh? We live in some strange days. And so I just want to encourage you. But at the, at the uh, warehouse, we have a lot of stuff. Do not leave. Everybody, please, Sister, sister um, Ray and Sister Robinson, love to get away and don't go to the back there to pick up anything and to eat. So you're not getting away today. Who else? But Bonnie, you two, you got to carry some things on for, sis for your sister and home. And Sister Winter, you go in there too. Good. So Noah calling the names who will see and and Joel too, she don't go. So I want to bless you and I want to thank God for, you know, and, and uh, somebody is here. Uh, what's his name? But it's way we... Shamar, come Shamar, come quick. You know, we, tomorrow is holiday, y'all. Bear with us. Tomorrow is holiday. Come Shamar. <laughs> Pastor say you're hungry. I live here. Pastor say you're hungry. And could you run the things to Keisha? Stuff for me quickly, Ke Cleon. Um, this is Shamar. Shamar, what do you have to say to us? I'm glad to be back. From? Uh, Missouri. Missouri where? What are you doing? Uh, for Leno, what I'm training to be an engineer mechanic. The Marine in Corps. The, in the Marine Corps. Y'all heard him? Yes, yeah, so we're glad to have you back. We pray for y'all so often, him and Michael White and, and all the rest. So God bless you. So how long are you going to be here for? Uh, tomorrow's my last day. Tomorrow's the last day? Mm, Pastor, got to pray for you. Pastor, remember to pray for Shamar. So we're going to pray for you before you go. So God bless you. So Sister Keisha had a, a shower last week. She, she was surprised. I don't know Sister Keisha, you know. Sister Keisha is so strange. I would have suspect something going on. She knew nothing. And so we, we, yeah. And for those of you who still wanting what to bring for her 
I asked her last, and I said, if you have everything, she said she needs some crib She Oh, look at the stuff. Look at look at what you all gave. Come on, Cleon, let the pictures flow. Yeah, nice. Wow, Dr. Brown stuff. Yeah, fold away, baby. Bad something. Look at that suit. I am looking forward to see little Orin in that suit. Yes, go ahead, Cleon. You see, y'all did well. So she need like um, she, what you said you need, Ke 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 Keisha? The body suit. You know the body suit that keep them warm because we come into winter like that, right? Dad, <laughs> Orin. Hmm. So that is what she needs and some crib sheets. So if you once you go to shop, please remember Sister Keisha. We have to show kindness, do we, as a church? Come on, church. We gotta show kindness. Sister Keisha works hard here, her and her husband, to make the worship feels good and looks good to the world. So we just want to show our love. The world world, please, as you're watching, we just we show love here at Lighthouse. And Sister Keisha and her husband there and the children. They're doing well with us. We want to thank God. And for those of you watching us in, on stream, Pastor already spoke to you. Just want to say God bless you. And it was good to be in the house of the Lord. Let's stand as we ask Pastor Claxton. Pastor Claxton, Reverend Claxton, all the way from Linden, Guyana. Come. Please remember Sister Audrey and her daughter. They're traveling back to Jamaica. And Sister Desri and her family, they're traveling on to Guyana. Dear God, we come before you at this time thanking you for your goodness, for your graciousness. Thank you that we can depend upon you. We think about those that were part of our group, part of our gathering. They made us feel that we were all, which we know, part of the body of Christ, irrespective from where we are from. We pray that you would go with those that are going back to Jamaica, that you would go with those that are going back to Guyana. We pray for your tender mercies continue to be extended towards them, for your protection, for your providence. We continue to be blessed by you. We continue to be protected by you. We continue to rest under your divine favor. Even today, as we prepare to leave this part of the service, Father and God, help us to be strong, to be courageous, of a good faith, and also to remember that you have promised us not just success, but good success. But Lord, there are certain conditions, there is criteria for us. Your word is supposed to be a part of our lives. We're supposed to be practicing your word daily, constantly. Help us that we will fulfill our part of the deal. And we know that when we fulfill our part, that God, you will fulfill your part. We give you thanks and praise. And let us keep looking up to you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Watch over us. Be with us, dear God. We put our pastor into your hands. We put his family into your hands. We thank you for protection. We thank you for providence. We thank you for thwarting the plans and the works of the enemy in the name of Jesus. We continue to release your blood, dear God, and we surround this family with the blood of Jesus. We put others, those in leadership positions and those not in leadership positions, members and followers and sympathizers towards this church. We say, Lord, watch over and be with them and let their light so shine that men will see their good works and glorify you, their Father. And God, through them, through the testimony of their lives, more and more will be drawn to this place of worship. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Brian, we're watching you, right? And you're watching us. Get home safely. We, we, we think we miss you. God bless you.